Hello and welcome to my channel IELTS Listening. Let's start with one of the best practice tests for improving listening skills. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 3. That'll be $23. Right, there's your change. Have a nice trip. Oh, I'll just get your bags out of the boot. Thank you very much. Now, George, let's find the check-in desk. Yes, but with all the changes they have made here at the airport, I'm not sure where the check-in desk is. I know, it's strange, isn't it? Why don't we ask for help? Good idea. What about that man sitting down over there? Which one? The one with the hat on and in the trolley? No, the one with the uniform behind the table. I'll ask him. Excuse me, could you tell me where the check-in desk for France Air is, please? Oh, um, let me think. The best way to get there would be to turn left at the end there, where the cafe is, and then go straight ahead until you're opposite the departure gate's entrance. No, 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 no. S sorry. Um, it might be quicker to turn right as soon as you get past the cafe and keep going along the corridor until you come to the sliding doors at the end. On the left. Yes, that's it. All the check-in counters are in a hall there. I'm pretty sure France Air is directly to your left as you walk in the hall. Thanks a lot. So, it's the left past the cafe and then right opposite... The bookshop. You can't miss it. Come on then, Lisa. We don't want to be late, and I want some time to get a cup of coffee and look around the bookshop. OK, George, but I want to go to the restroom first. I'll meet you at the check-in desk. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 4 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 4 to 10. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, I would like to check in for flight FA-492. Very good. Uh, can I have your ticket and passport, please? Oh, yes, here you are. OK, thanks. Uh, if you could just put your suitcase on the scales. Oh, I have this extra box that I want to take as well. OK, well... That's extra luggage, so I'll have to get you to fill out an excess baggage declaration certificate. It'll cost extra, I'm afraid. Let me see. Um, $40 exactly, if the total value of your contents is under $400. Oh, well, what's the form for? It's just a form you have to fill out, so that if there are any problems, we'll know where you are and how to contact you. So, if you can give me a few details, I'll key in the information. OK, then. Your passport says your name is Lavier. Is that right? Yes, George Lavier. George, uh, L-A-V-I-L-L-I-E-R-S. Good. Now, nationality. French? No, wait a minute. It's a Swiss passport. Well, yes, I live in France, but I was born in Switzerland. Swiss. Very good. Flight number... F-A-492, destination is... Paris. Are you connecting with any other flight in Paris, or will you be staying there? I'm spending my vacation in Paris. Well, Sèvres, just outside Paris. OK. So what's the phone number there? Um, let me think. The country code for France is uh, 33, and the number is 19861-4537. Right, so that's... 331-9861-4537. Yes, that's it. And can you tell me briefly what you have in the box? Well, there are some books, just university textbooks from last semester, some clothes, and, uh, oh, yeah, my computer discs. OK, thank you.
And what would be the approximate value of the contents?、Mm, quite a bit, actually. About、um, yes, about one hundred and fifty dollars. That's all. There's your receipt for the box, your passport and ticket, and here is your boarding pass. Gate seven. You can board the plane in about thirty-five minutes. Have a nice flight. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to seventeen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to seventeen. Hello, and thanks everyone for coming here today. I know it's always a bit stressful going for a job interview, but it's best to be prepared. For any of you who may not know me, my name is Fiona Ogilvie, and my job is to offer guidance and support for students with special needs. Now. You wouldn't be here today if you weren't interested in finding a job in the holidays. So let's get down to it and see what things you need to be looking out for. Most of you, I hope, will be applying for jobs with the companies that have been recommended by the university. The reason for this is that we here at the university already know these companies and have established good working relationships with them. I've also been to visit all of them and checked out the facilities they have to offer. You really need to make informed choices when you're looking for a job, and make sure you know before you even get to the interview stage that your needs will be met. But I know that some of you are applying for jobs independently, and have looked at companies outside the university recommended list. So for you, it's best to plan ahead. And be aware of what it is you may need while you're working. Things that you need to check when you go for an interview are: Are there enough toilet facilities, and are these easily accessible? Also, you want to check that all the public areas inside the building are barrier-free, so you can get direct access to these public spaces whenever you need to. And ask about ramps into the building, so you know how many there are and where they are located. These kinds of things are so much more difficult to sort out when you've started work, as they take time. But ramps are an absolute must, so please make sure you know where they are. Another thing you must make sure of is that the lifts have the correct lowered control panels. Ask if all the lifts have this facility. Or if it's only certain ones. Now, something I think that is often overlooked is working hours. What you want to make sure of is that you get flexi time. This basically means that your working hours are flexible, and you can clock on and clock off in times that suit you, within reason, of course. Most companies do recognise that it takes much longer for someone in a wheelchair to get on and off buses and trains. Public transport can take that much longer, so you need to be organised and prepared. And for those of you lucky enough to own a car, check how many disability parking spaces are available. Remember that it's your right to have a disabled parking space. These also need to be near enough to a wheelchair accessible entrance or ramp. Okay, are there any questions before we move on? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions eighteen to twenty.
Now listen and answer questions 18 to 20. Right, let's move on then. Now I want to talk you through the series of visits to companies which we've got planned for next week. On Monday morning, we will be visiting the Lowland Hotel. They have various summer jobs available, working as a receptionist or conference organiser in their busy conference centre, organising and setting up conferences. You need to be prepared for working in an office environment and spending quite a bit of time talking on the telephone. The bus leaves for the hotel at 9am, so make sure you leave yourself plenty of time to get there. When you arrive at the hotel, please gather in the reception area and wait for someone to take you to your first session, which will be a talk. The talk at the hotel will begin at 10am and then there will be a short tour of the hotel. There will be a light lunch provided, which is usually salads and sandwiches. The next place we'll be visiting will be on Tuesday afternoon. We'll be going to visit a little local company that makes handmade paper and cards. For those of you studying art, this may be just what you're looking for. We'll be taken on a tour of the company which lasts three hours. The tour will start at 3.30pm and after that you'll have a chance to meet some of the staff. Tea and coffee will also be provided. We have no trips planned for Wednesday, but on Thursday morning we'll be going to Tobago Travel Agency. This is a very popular choice amongst our students because you can get student discounts on holidays. We've booked a coach for this and it'll leave from outside the refectory at 8am. You'll need to bring a packed lunch for this, so please don't forget. There is a little canteen where you can buy hot and cold food, but this is closed on Thursdays. Friday, we'll be having representatives from all the companies visiting us, so you will have a chance to ask any questions, and of course, put your name down on the list if you're interested in working for them over the summer. This event will take place in the main hall next to the library, and it'll run from 10.30 until 4.00. I really hope you make the most of this excellent opportunity to not only earn yourself some extra money, but also to gain experience of what it's like to work. And if you'd like to find out more, then please ask some of the students who worked last year. They're all wearing green badges and will be happy to speak to you afterwards. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a tutor and two students discussing the best ways to study. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Well, how are you both settling in? Fine. Yes, no problems. So far, anyway. Good. Remember that as your personal tutor, I'm here to help you if you do have any difficulties. Now, as you know, lectures start on Monday, so I thought we'd look at a few ways of making the most of them especially in terms of the notes you take. Let's begin by thinking about what you can do before you even go to the lecture. <laughs> Any ideas? Um, make sure you're up to date with all the background reading, so you know plenty about the subject already. Yes, that's essential. The lecturer will assume you have that knowledge. Anything else, Carlos? Well, uh, 
check what the topic's going to be. Of the lecture, that is. I'd go a bit further than that and consider what the content may be. Then you could ask yourself some questions that you want answering and listen out for the relevant information during the lecture. Okay. Now that brings us to the lecture itself and the actual business of writing notes. But there is a lot to deal with there, so we'll come back to that later. What I'd like to do for the moment is continue with the process of note taking and move on to the next stage. Any suggestions for what that might be? When the lecture is over, you mean? Yes, once you're able to sit down somewhere quiet with your notes.、Uh, read them? More than that, you need to make sure they'll still make sense to you weeks, months later. Edit them? Yes, that's what's needed.、Mm. It's well worth spending a few minutes on it. Any missing words, anything difficult to read, things you didn't have time to jot down, now is the time to do so, while everything's still fresh in your mind. Right. And after that, when's the best time to revise them? When do you think, Carlos? Um, I'd say just before the next lecture, in the same subject. Precisely. <laughs> That's a vital time to look at them again, for obvious reasons. But it's definitely not the only time. When should you revise them again? A month later, maybe?、Uh, sooner, and much more often than that. I'd recommend you look at them again once a week. That's why it's so important they're complete and easy to follow. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Right. Let's go back to note taking and begin with the basics before the lecture has even started. What should you do when you walk into the room? Get a good seat, at the front if you can,、uh, where you can hear clearly and avoid distractions. Yes, though obviously others will have had the same idea, so it's as well to get there a bit early. So, when the lecture's underway and you're busy jotting things down, what should you try to ensure? That you're getting all the main points. And what if you don't catch something, something you know must be important? Um,、uh, I'd leave a space, then I could check it later. Perhaps by asking a question at the end and fill it in afterwards. That's an excellent way to deal with it, yes.、Mm. And there's something else I'd like to mention here. Talking about going through notes afterwards, it's absolutely vital that what you write is legible for one very good reason it saves time. You'll waste many hours during the course if your revision is held up because you can't read what you've written. Okay. What else can we do to make listening and note taking more efficient? Well, I always listen out for signpost words. Uh, uh sorry. What are they? <laughs> they're the ones lecturers use to say where they're going. A bit like a signpost at a road junction, I suppose. Things like, the first reason is, however, to sum up, and so on. Yes. They can tell you when something important is coming. And help you organize your notes too. Is there anything else you can add, Carlos?、Uh, there's something I think's very useful, but it's later, after the lecture is finished. That's fine. Go on. Well, what I do is go through what I've written down, summing up the main points in a few words in the margin on the left-hand side of the page. I try to use words that'll jog my memory, so that I can remember what everything's about when I look at them again. Yes, that can work very well. What some people do to review their notes is cover up their full notes from the lecture, maybe with a piece of paper or a card, and concentrate just on what they've put in the margin, trying to recall the details. Then they move the cover down a little and check whether they were right. 
Or you could put your main points on another piece of paper and clip them together. Instead of covering and uncovering, you just hold a page in each hand. Sure. It's down to personal preference, really. Everyone has their own learning style. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a talk on two famous American presidents. As you listen, fill the missing information in the notes below. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. John F. Kennedy and Abraham Lincoln lived in different times and had very different family and educational backgrounds. Kennedy lived in the 20th century, while Lincoln lived in the 19th century. Kennedy was born in 1917, whereas Lincoln was born more than 100 years earlier in 1809. As for their family backgrounds, Kennedy came from a rich family, but Lincoln's family was not wealthy. Because Kennedy came from a wealthy family, he was able to attend expensive private schools. He graduated from Harvard University. Lincoln, on the other hand, had only one year of formal schooling. In spite of his lack of normal schooling, he became a well-known lawyer. He taught himself law by reading law books. Lincoln was, in other words, a self-educated man. In spite of these differences in Kennedy and Lincoln's backgrounds, some interesting similarities between the two men are evident. In fact, many books have been written about the strange coincidences in the lives of these two men. For example, take their political careers. Lincoln began his political career as a U.S. congressman. Similarly, Kennedy also began his political career as a congressman. Lincoln was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1847. Kennedy was elected to the House in 1947. They went to the Congress just 100 years apart. Another interesting coincidence is that each man was elected President of the United States in a year ending with the number 6-0. Lincoln was elected President in 1860 and Kennedy was elected in 1960. Furthermore, both men were President during years of civil unrest in the country. Lincoln was President during the American Civil War. During Kennedy's term of office, Civil unrest took the form of civil rights demonstrations. Another striking similarity between the two men was that, as you probably know, neither lived to complete his term in office. Lincoln and Kennedy were both assassinated while in office. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas, after only 1,000 days in office. Lincoln was assassinated in 1865 a few days after the end of the American Civil War. It's rather curious to note that both presidents were shot while they were sitting next to their wives. These are only a few examples of the uncanny and unusual similarities between the destinies of these two American men, 
who had a tremendous impact on the social and political life of the United States and the imagination of the American people. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Dear viewers, thank you for taking this listening test. Please let me know about your score in the comments section below. Keep on practicing. It's the only way to be successful. We are planning to upload more IELTS helpful videos. Please subscribe to our channel, IELTS Listening. Thank you.